All righty. So we'll get started. Um, so what I was going to say is that one of my firm beliefs in this business is number one, you have to have a schedule for yourself, right? So my schedule is really boiled down to a lot of different categories. So I have it boiled down to my personal things, you know, kids things, my personal things. So, you know, my mark, I mark out my bowling days cause I bowl Tuesday, Wednesday. So I know I don't do shows then. Um, you know, you have to have time to yourself in your life, right? You got to schedule it though. Um, and then I have like my business stuff all marked out. So all of my, my show days are planned out. Okay. So I plan everything out. Um, my doctor's appointments are all in my calendar. I, I have everything color coded. So I pick different colors for the different categories. Does that make sense? So for me, it just is easier to kind of see my calendar and see, you know, what I've got going on. Um, but the thing about it is this, if I've scheduled myself to work, let's say 10 days for shows, then I work 10 days. So those days that I didn't book a show, I still work because I was scheduled to work. So that's why you guys have seen me last night and tonight and today is because I didn't have shows when I normally would have shows. And so I still worked. Make sense? Okay. Yeah. Because if it's scheduled and I basically have given myself permission to say, this is work time, this is family time, this is personal time, whatever. Um, so I just continue to work. And my husband knows like that's, you know, he knows that, Fridays, I normally have a show. And if I don't have a show, I'm going to be doing something, spending time in my office. So it lets me catch up on things, but then also you guys get to reap the benefits of it. So. How long do you typically block out? Um, normally two hours um, because okay. a, a typical cooking show is about two hours for me. Um, okay. I mean, I really could schedule myself four hours because of driving time, you know, to and from. Um, but normally if I'm if I was scheduled to work and I don't have a show, I still try to do like two hours of work. Okay. So it just helps me keep in a rhythm. You know, it helps my family keep in a rhythm because when they expected me to be gone, I still kind of creep downstairs. And so I'm gone, you know, and they, they know, they know that, you know, it's just kind of an expectation for them that they know. Um, Cause we've been doing it for so long that if mom's not working, she's still going to work. And it helps. It helps keep me um, accountable to my business, you know, because I could just have playtime, you know. <laughs> I could just take the night off, drink a bottle of wine, and do nothing, but that's not going to give me any forward motion in my business, so I, uh, I continue to work. So this was brought on because Brooke reached out to me and was asking me questions about when you're new, you know, how you basically come out to your friends and family about being new. And so um, I told her, I was like, oh, this is a great subject to train on with new consultants. Let's just hop on at two o'clock today. Um, so there's a couple different ways that you want to do that. Um, and so one is going to be to kind of announce yourself on Facebook, right? So creating a post on your personal wall. Now, what I recommend you do before that, though, is create a VIP group. Okay, so just like we have you guys create groups to have your Facebook parties in, you're going to create a VI, you're going to create a group for your business. Okay. And so the reason why you want to kind of get that up and running ahead of time is so that when you announce yourself as a pampered chef consultant, you can tag that business group on that post and say, Hey, who would like to join my VIP group? Right. And so then people can just, they, it's not just adding a bunch of people into a group, okay? It's actually getting people into that group that want to be there. Um, I mean, I think that we can all kind of look down our friends list and be like, okay, these 15 people, they would not care if I added them into this group, right? They wouldn't care. But then you have that other group of friends that they're going to be the ones, you know, the ones that are like, why did you add me to this group? Because you're supposed to be my friend. But anyway. And so those are the ones you actually want to kind of more so invite into your group. Um, and so when you make that announcement post, you know, it's something like, Hey guys, you know, I'm super excited. I just, you know, just started my pampered chef business. Not sure if I, you know, told you guys all that yet or not. Um, 
uh, I just started my VIP group um, for my customers, and it's going to be a community where we, you know, however you want to word it, you know, I do fun things in my group. I try to not always make it so pampered chefy, you know, um, I try to make it more engaging than just posting recipes and asking people to book parties for me. Um, I try to actually get conversations going in there. Um, so however you want to word it, and then you tag your VIP group and, you know, do like, you know, want to join my group, you know, click here or however you want to fluff it up. Um, and then there are a bunch of graphics that you can use. Like if you go to our team page and under announcements, um, where I just redid the new consultant kind of getting started document that's up there, um, all the way toward the bottom of it, there's like a guess who's the new pampered chef consultant or something graphic in there that you can kind of pair up with that to kind of, you know, catch exact, there you go, there you go. Um, so you can kind of pair that up with that. But I definitely recommend that you all have a VIP group um, because it kind of keeps all of your people together that want to help you with your business, but it also lets you going forward have a way to stay in contact with your customers and your hosts. So part of my host coaching process is normally asking my host if they would like me to add them into my VIP group. Okay. At my cooking shows, you know, I let everybody know that I have a VIP group. And if they send me a friend request, I will add them into my VIP group. Okay. So it's just a way that you can in the future soft sell to people. Um, because I am not an advocate for here, buy this here, book a party here, join my team. You know, people will naturally gravitate to that, right? We don't have to put it in their face. If you show, Brooke, if you showed those amazing pictures that you had posted on your Facebook um, page today with your sauce that you're making, you know, and using Pampered Chef tools, you know, and they're kind of just in the backdrop of that photo, you know, so it's in a picture of a, in our, the um, sauce in the saucepan with whatever you were using tool wise. People will naturally ask questions about that. Number one, they're going to want your recipe. Number two, they're going to be like, oh, what's that? I've never seen that before. And so that lets conversations start. Okay. And that's really what we're in the business for. Um, so I definitely recommend for all of you guys that are, you know, one here or haven't, you know, that are watching the lot, you know, the recording um, that if you have not created a VIP group to absolutely do that. Um, normally we try to do a virtual launch party with you guys as you guys are starting. Sometimes you may have just hosted a party, so it's not, you know, something that, you know, we could immediately do. Um, but if you have done a virtual launch party, that launch group <coughs> you already did your party in is easily changeable over into your VIP group. Okay. So I know Jackie and Mike, you guys did an actual cooking show with me. Um, so, but you guys have already created your VIP group, right? No, we're actually working on that we're, this weekend. We're probably okay. going to be today or tomorrow. Yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah. And Brooke, you guys didn't do a virtual launch, right? Because you guys are planning to do an actual launch party. Okay. Right. So, yeah. So I know there's going to be some people that hopefully will watch the playback of this that are new um, that had virtual launch parties with whoever they signed up under. Um, so if you haven't already converted your group over, um, just talk to whoever your recruiter was about converting your group over. Because the good thing about that is that your people are already in that group. And so all you need to do is strip it back down and then change the name of it and add some new graphics to it. So it just makes it easier um, to do it that way. Um, so what should a group look like? You know, what, what should the content be? Um, so I've done a lot of new social media training um, in the last six months. And um, a large part of it has been with a lot of people that are like geniuses in social media marketing. Um, one of them, of which they actually just brought on to our company, Shonda Mundell. Um, and so there's actually brand new training. Um, and if you guys have not taken it, I would highly recommend that you go do that um, when you have time. Um, but it's all about social media, okay, and using social media. Have you guys seen that? Because if not, I'll show you where it's at. 
I don't think that. Okay. Let me pull it up real quick. Beth, have you seen that new social media training? Uh, no, I haven't caught that one yet. Okay. Here, I'll show you guys where it's at. <laughs> Had to wet my whistle. Ooh. Uh, let me make sure where they put it first before I pop all these screens open. They've been moving things around, which I'm really excited about because I love, do you guys like the new changes that they made when you log into Consultants Corner? I do. Oh, it's so easy. So, so easy. All right, where, you know what? I bet it's under, oh, that's where it's at. Okay, let me share my screen. Okay, so here we'll go home. <clears throat> so when you start out in this screen, okay, you're just gonna go to your full site. And then up here under training and resources, if you go down to marketing online, I think this is where it's at. Yes. Um, so if you scroll down a little bit, there's a little red link right here that says social media training. And this is Shannon Mundell. Now, the benefit of having Shannon Mundell teaching and training us is that she actually used to be a Pampered Chef consultant, okay? And she was highly successful with Pampered Chef, and she just had an amazing social media presence, and so she actually stopped doing Pampered Chef to focus on helping direct sale companies with social media. And so she has put together um, some training and we'll be going forward doing training for, um, for Pampered Chef. So um, I've taken all of her training on here. And so just like the party experience training, both for virtual and for cooking shows that hopefully you guys have done, um, it's kind of set up the same way. Um, so it's gonna have, there's five different lessons right down here that you'll kind of walk through um, of it. And I think they probably took me, I don't know, five minutes or so with each lesson. Um, there's a, like a little video that they do a video um, and then there's actually like a little quiz along with it. Don't get discouraged by the quiz because what I found was that they actually are asking you questions in a quiz that you didn't learn from the video lesson that they were giving you. It was more to kind of help gauge you where you were at in your social media knowledge. And so what she teaches you guys is that these VIP groups need to be more of a community feeling than just a sales group, okay? So you want to basically um, market yourself and create your own brand for yourself, okay? So if people had to think about you, um, what are the first words that pop in their mind? You know, what, what are you known for? What are the things that, you know, Jackie, you and Mike are known for within your friends group? You know, what are the things that, you know, immediately would give them thought. Yes, they know you're a pampered chef consultant. So me, um, the way that I've kind of branded myself is, you know, tons of like, you know, food tips and, and meal, meal prepping, you know, so that's one area of my focus. Um, humor and funny, you know, so again, you'll find a lot of humor and funny stuff on my, on my VIP group. Um, and then, you know, so you kind of figure out what your niche is. Does that make sense? And then that's what, how you want to break your group up, okay? So that you're not just throwing Pampered Chef in their face at all times. You actually want to bring them into your kitchen, bring them into your life, and bring them into your house so that that deepens the connection between you and your customer group, okay? So, Brooke, what would be, you know, if you had to think of three things that your friends and family know you for, what would they be? Uh, probably, the, like, the cooking tips. Definitely cooking like in recipes and probably being really outgoing and fun. Right, exactly. And so someone like you, um, you know, some of us are going to be shyer and not want to be in front of a camera. 
And so you use your skills to your advantage. So me, you guys know, I like to be in front of a camera and I love to be in front of crowds. So I love to do live, you know, live videos in my group. Um, that's one of the things that they look for and watch for. Do I need to be better at it? We can always be better at it. I found what I need to do is be more consistent with, with when I'm offering it. Okay. So one of the things that Shanda recommends for you guys is to actually schedule yourself. So here we go back to the whole scheduling piece, right? So when you're in your office and you're planning, let's say, um, your month out each week or every other week, you take time out to plan what the content of your VIP group is going to be. Okay. So they say to keep it consistent. So let's say Mondays is like, I don't know, makeover dinner Monday. Um, Tuesdays is like a tip Tuesday. Wednesdays is like, you know, however you want to, you know, brand your days in your VIP group. If you would sit, if you sit down and kind of plan out, you know, what each day is going to look like, it's easier to then, if you know you're doing tips on Tuesday, you can easily sit down and put four tips together, right? So that you can plan your content out for four weeks or two weeks or one week. How, how often you want to work that into your schedule. But she says that what happens when you actually plan out the content in your group is that you get better engagement. People start to expect it. So if I know if I'm one of those people that love a good tip, I know on Tuesdays I need to tune into your group, okay? Because it becomes consistent. It becomes something people expect from you. And the biggest thing about it is that you're adding value. You're adding value to yourself and you're adding value to your personal brand when you stay consistent with everything you're doing with people. Um, so kind of like at my shows, you know, I, I think that, I don't know, Jackie and Mike, you guys have been to a show with me. Um, what are some of the things that st stood out about me at my show? You're funny, personable, great in front of a, any crowd and engaging with them. Like yeah. you read the crowd really well. And because I've been to several of your shows and yeah. So, and that's exactly that kind of atmosphere that you create, not, you know, in a virtual party or in a cooking show is the same kind of atmosphere you want to create in your VIP groups. Okay. So it's the same kind of thing. Um, it, cause it's really, it all boils down to connecting with people, right? The more personal you can get with your group of people, the better relationships you're going to build with those people. And those are going to be the people that will bend over backwards to help you. Okay. Because let's face it. I mean, when we, when people feel like we only look at them as a sales dollar, that's when you're going to detract people. People are not going to want to be a part of that. So if you're only using your group as, I could really use your help to book shows. Uh, you know, I've been challenged to sell 15 of these. Uh, you know, buy this, book a show. Who wants to join my team? People only feel like they're a dollar sign to you. They don't actually feel like you're providing a service to them. And so just like at my shows, I realized that people are giving up two hours of their life to come spend with me, you know, they're making a choice. So when they're making a choice to come to a party or a virtual party, they're checking in a couple times a day at the virtual party, they're, they're giving up time to do something else. And so you want to make sure that that time that they're spending with you at a show or in your VIP group is, is time well spent, basically. Does that make sense? Okay. So with all that said, what questions do you guys have? And if you're not in my VIP group, you guys can request to join it and then you can just kind of check it out. You don't have to stay in there. You can if you want to. Is um, that your pantry group that you have? Is that yeah. VIP? Okay. Yeah, that's the one that that's the one I recruited you off of. Yeah, <laughs> it is. So, Brooke, let me ask you, okay? I know you joined Sarah's team because I was not going to let you sign up under, you know, no, I don't do that to people. <laughs> um, so, what made you decide to, to join? Because, so I'll tell you guys, I was doing a quick cooker live demo on my page. And this girl was like, oh, my God, I need this. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, you should just sell with us. Like, come on. <sighs> you know, and I just was giving her crap because that's what I do. People, that's what I know, I'm known for, though. 
Um, so did it, did it come across salesy? Like, do I come across salesy in my group? No. The thing that I liked about when I was watching your videos and stuff, and I think it w I, I had a party back in June and I've known Sarah for years. Like <laughs> we went to high school together and she's just a blast of fun. She's a sweetheart. So, um, and then I saw that she posted that she does pampered chef. And I was like, Oh my God, that's great. I love kitchen. Like I'm a cook fanatic. Mm -hmm. So, and I love kitchen gadgets. That's my big thing. So I decided to do a party with her in June this past summer and it was so fun. I loved the products and the way that she was selling it, just like it wasn't very salesy at all. Like it was very re relatable. Um, and she was showing us basically, you know, this is, this could make your cooking easier. Like, and you know, we, she really sold me on the, um, the, uh, clothes and cut. Right. Loved it. Love it. Clothes and cut. So many products that we didn't even use, but she brought just to look at. And I mean, I use them almost on a daily basis now and it just cuts my cooking time in half. Right. And I'm a big fan of cutting cooking time in half because let's be honest, it's cray cray during the week. Amen, sister. <laughs> yes. And especially when you have a family to feed and you're doing all kinds of things and you're working and you have school and it's just nuts. So I wanted to, I wanted to share that with everybody else because I know <laughs> that I'm in a community where, you know, I'm friends with a lot of moms who don't like to cook because it just takes too long. It's too hard to do that during the week. So then they end up, they're like, oh, I feel bad because I'm giving my kids frozen food but they're still eating so I just wanted to make that easier but and then I watched your I was on your virtual party for the summer the mega night. team party we did yep and I just loved it like you weren't salesy it was like you were bringing people in and if it was certain people who had this kind of scenario then they could use these kind of products and that mm -hmm. was just really what brought me in right it's like helping other people make their lives easier with cooking Absolutely. And I loved it. So yeah. It, it, that's the biggest thing. If we focus on the solutions for people and not just selling, you know, not, not selling the products. It's not about that. Right. Because if you can, if you can paint the picture for someone, why they need a product in their kitchen, you have to paint the picture first, right? You have to create the need and desire for it. If you're just, if you're just throwing products out there, just to throw products out there, nobody's ever going to buy them. Um, no, because they feel like you just want their money and then that's exactly it. yeah so that's why you know like when you guys came to recipe night the other day when you when you did um <laughs> it was funny because these guys are like oh my god you're selling me stuff like because that's the way I am at my cooking shows too you have to create a desire around the products you know you, you have to get people to actually put themselves in the mindset of using that in their own kitchen and so that's why I ask so many questions of people, you know, because everybody's got a cooking style, right? right. Everybody cooks differently. You're going to have people that want to throw crap in the microwave and be done with it. You have people that are like, I don't do microwave cooking. Um, you've got people that are the ones that come home from 530, you know, at 530 at night. And they're like, oh my God, I forgot to take, you know, food out. What do I do? So we have products that work with everybody's scenarios in life. And that's what I love is because we have options, you know, you can give people options, you know, so just like people have come to my shows and I show them the meat tenderizer, then the next time they come to my show, I might call, might show them the closing cut. So they have two options. They're like, why do you do this to me? Because I, I want to give options to people, right? You're going to find the one that's going to work for you. So those are the kinds of things though, that in our group, that's the content that people want. Okay. So helping people figure out why they need the products in their kitchen. Absolutely. There's so many ways of doing that without selling stuff. Okay. You don't have to sell stuff. Pampered chefs products will naturally sell themselves if they see them in use. And if you're not comfortable doing live videos in your group, then you post videos of it, of pampered chef doing it. Okay. Either way, it brings it to life where a picture will never be able to do it. Well, and then this is another thing. The other night when you were doing recipe night, you made those pork carnitas in the quick cooker. Don't. So I was showing my mom this video, this, and she was like, 
she's only using one pot. And I was like, exactly. People hate doing dishes. I know I do. I think it's right. horrible and it's time consuming. And I just, yes. it's gross. I don't like it. it. <laughs> it I am one of those creatures that if I can throw it all in a pot and hit a magical little button and it cooks and I don't have to stand over, over top of the stove. I mean, literally we just came home. The kids had bowling this morning, right? We did, it was running late cause it was the first day of the league. Um, we didn't get home until like one o'clock. We have company coming over tonight. Yay, we're playing Cards Against Humanity. If you've never done it, oh my God, it's fun. So yeah. much fun. I know. So I'm making, you know, we're going to do mile high nachos. Everybody has a snack. And I'm like, oh my gosh, we forgot to take hamburger out. We forgot to take chicken out. Well, guess what I did? Hey, eight minutes in the cooker and the, you know, the hamburger's done. 12 minutes in the cooker and the chicken's done. There you go. I'm not seeing over a pot. I'm cleaning my house at the same time. You know, because that's how life really is, you know? God, I mean, we all do want to make, wave a magical wand, you know, and have our house clean at all times and have plans for dinner. But I'm a realist <laughs> and most people are not, not, that's not the case for most people. So those are a sham. <laughs> right <laughs> yeah, seriously though if you like watch these cooking shows on tv nobody has time to do that yeah nobody you know it needs 30 minutes but it really takes like an hour and a half for us <laughs> lay people <It's> terrible. <laughs> but, like, that's the thing like i made i made in the one or the everyday pan the rock rock i made that bruschetta pasta. Oh, I love that recipe. I, made, I had grilled chicken with it that I cut oh, up with so the good. salad chopper thing. It oh, yeah. Good. And I only used yeah. one pan. Exactly. And, and that's it. exactly, you know, when we did recipe night, I made the carnitas, right? We prepped all the ingredients while it was cooking and made donuts at the same time. So the carnitas were done. All of the prep work was done and donuts were coming out of the oven. Hello. How you doing? Fat girl stream. Just saying. <laughs> you said it. I'm yeah. just <laughs> so yeah I would definitely recommend though that you guys you know take that take time to do that social media training um with it being new um it's one of those things that you can do at your own pace but if you're really looking as a new consultant to get your business going um social media is a huge part of our business you know it's a really it's a huge part of every single business um if you are not on instagram that's another place that i would tell you guys is really really big um because so many of the age group that we're going after as a company being the millennial generation most millennials don't spend a lot of time on facebook anymore most millennials are in on instagram so I do really recommend that you have both and get familiar with both. I'm going to work on doing some Instagram training here soon um, because I, there's been a lot of people asking questions, even directors that have no idea about Instagram. And I've had, I've been on Instagram now for like two years and I think I have like 700 followers or something on there. So, you know, and I've recruited five people off of Instagram. I mean, there's a way to market yourself on there. Um, and it's, it's very, it's different than Facebook though. You know, it's very different. Um, but you just have to be present, you know, and, and really be conscious of, of how you're selling to people, you know, and the kind of content that you're providing to people. Um, I think that if we focus more on the solutions for people and focus on being more of a service than a seller, then the sales will naturally come for you guys, you know? And along with that, you know, if I'm demoing a quick cooker on Facebook live and, and I'm like, literally I'm, I'm selling that product without selling that product. But the best thing is those are booking tools, right? Most people can't afford to drop $240 for a quick cooker. Most people can't afford $140 for a rock rock, but they can afford it if they host a show typically. Okay. And so that's where that line comes in. When you're doing a Facebook live demo, you want to keep it short and sweet to the point. Right. Um, and I try to throw little seeds out there about the show, but I'm never like, Oh my gosh, you have to host a show. What the heck is wrong with you? I'm, I'm serious. Like I've seen some people's live demos and just my mouth hit the floor. Um, that's like really in your face. Oh, I don't oh, like girl. to do that. Oh girl. Like yeah. I try to motivate, like my cousin, she loves, she has twin boys and they, they're just turned two. 
So she's all over the place. So right. this, I mean, stuff like that to make her life easier would Absolutely. be perfect because she works, her husband works and, you know, with twin, twin two-year-olds, that's just, that's fun. You just have to paint the picture. <laughs> that just makes me need coffee thinking about it. I know. Right? <laughs> so, I mean, stuff like that. Like I love, I would love to help people with kids just realize how easy it could be and like to have their kids even join in if they want right to. absolutely and you know so one of the questions I always get so let's talk about going live for a couple minutes because I think you know most of you guys that are on here are not going to be super shy about going live on your groups once you have them established um Mike's like oh. <laughs> I expect to see you live on there sir I'm just saying he um, needs to be. <laughs> so a couple of tips for going live is the average person will only tune in for about 12 minutes. Okay. Um, so you five want to make me. sure what's that five, five for me. I have a very, very short attention span and, and people do people do trust me. Because I wait till it goes through life's busy, like, right? Yeah. Life's busy. Um, so what they recommend if you're going to do a Facebook live, unless it's something you're doing a virtual party and you're doing a live demonstration where people expect it to be a little bit longer. I say I'm, I'm with you girl. I'm like five minutes to 12 minutes is kind of the, the tops. Okay. So they would recommend that either you're showing them the beginning of the recipe or the end of the recipe. So if you're showing them the beginning, you're showing them all the prep tools. And you're briefly talking about your main power tool. If you're showing them the end, you're showing it coming out of the microwave or out of the oven and giving them a brief explanation of how, how you did it and what tools you used, right? They don't need to watch the whole thing to get, you know, the understanding of what you were doing. Um, so you want to keep it short, you know, <laughs> think of attention span. How long would you sit there and watch a video? Um, for some of us, you know, depending on the person, you might watch them if they're pretty humorous, but um, for the most part, you're not going to. Make sure your area that you're working in is clean, okay? Um, I've seen some very disturbing things, and <laughs> Tiffany's gonna laugh. Um, I've seen some pretty disturbing Facebook Lives where it's like a, a, a war zone in the background, and that's gonna distract from people. Um, so you want to make sure that your area that you're working in, it doesn't have to be a big area, right? You can literally pan the camera down over top of you so that they just see the countertop. You don't have to be in the screen if you don't want to be, right? All they really need to see is the tools. Um, make sure you think of hygiene when you do it. I know this is like... <laughs> The other day I watched a meal prepping video and this girl kept touching her hair and it was bothering me so bad because there's food right there. I don't know. You have such people are touching their nice. hair, they're touching their face. Like I've seen people yes. touch other parts of their bodies. I've seen people <laughs> that are are cooking stuff and they're working with raw meats oh, and they like touch it with their hands and, and then they don't go wash their hands. I've seen oh, I know Jackie, I can't get over it. I still can't get over it. And so for me, so for me, and Tiffany knows I'm not lying about this. Am I lying, <laughs> Tiffany? No, you're not. <laughs> so for me, do you think I'm ever going to watch a Facebook Live from that person again? Nope. I can't get past the first 30 seconds of it because I'm waiting for them to do something disgusting. <laughs> so just be aware, you know, just like at a cooking show, you would never do those things. Hopefully not. Um, so you're not going to do it in your Facebook Live. Um, yeah. <laughs> Those are my biggest tips for Facebook. <laughs> and I know I shouldn't have to say those things, but you do. There's We're one in every crowd. <laughs> one thing too with Facebook Live is have your stuff prepped ahead of time. Have Absolutely. everything planned ahead of time because once you go live, no one wants to see a blank of you not there, but talking in the background. I mean, you might forget one thing, but when you're starting to forget a lot of things and have it all there, have it measured out and have just explain tools. like how much you have or whatever. Absolutely. Have your tools laid out. The other thing is this. Um, most people here, I'm going to pretend like we're Facebook live. Hey everybody. So I'm going to give everybody a couple minutes to join before we get started. 
<laughs> no. Oh, oh. Don't forget to let me know when you're here. Oh, we have two. We're waiting on ten. <laughs> if you give them a notification that you're going live, no one's going to see you unless they're actually on Facebook. So this is the thing about that. If you take two minutes, the first two minutes to sit there and look at your phone as you're waiting for people to join <laughs> and you're waiting and waiting and waiting and you may have one person on there and you're like, Oh, somebody's on. Well, we're going to wait a couple more minutes for other people to join. What do you think you're doing? Wasting time. Absolutely. Because remember your Facebook live is going to be there. People will watch it when they have time to come back and watch it. And if the first two minutes of the video with the five to 12 minute attention span is you waiting for people to join, They're guess gonna what? Keep scrolling. Done, right? So you welcome everybody just like you were gonna be at a cooking show or whatever. And you say, hey, let me know when you're here or if you're watching the playback, let me know, you know, drop an emoji down or, you know, tell me you were watching the recording or something. You just keep going, you just keep going. You know, we don't wait for people to join. I made that mistake for a long time, trust me. Right in front of my phone. <laughs> Until I was like, what am I doing? That's so stupid. That's just dumb. That's just dumb. So anyway, so what, any questions you guys have? I have a question on Evernote. Okay. Um, I attempted to, this week, try and get the new outline. It wouldn't let me. It wouldn't let me either. It said it was too big. Yeah. And then I don't know how to delete anything on Evernote to drop it in. Like to be swipe, like, like you hold and swipe. If you're doing it on your phone, or I think it's like a right. No, okay. Yeah. If you, if you're on a, a desktop or a Mac, if you right click, um, it'll say delete file. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, that's kind of the, the unfortunate thing with the free version, that you don't right. have a lot of memory with it. Um, but there is a way around that. What's that? There is a way around that, because I have the free version, and I have, it's called, um, now they changed it since I upgraded my phone, but it's called, um, I have an Android, so I have Samsung. Okay, I have a Samsung have an Note app that I guess it comes with the phone and all I do is save it in that in a note in that like the link and all okay. I have to do it opens up now I can't change anything because it's too big um but when I save it in in the Evernote like if it's small enough size I could change and add stuff you know to a note that Becky makes but this one is oversized so I can't save it to my Evernote but I save the link to my um, Samsung note that way I could um, copy and paste from it gotcha yeah that way you don't have to pay for an upgrade if you don't want to at this point in time you could still use it okay. um, you just won't be able to like edit it to your to your own liking you just have to edit it into your post when you make your post right but gotcha yeah now along those lines I saw in that I, I know this is off of your training. Oh, no, that's okay. Nope. Ask whatever questions. When it said in there uh, on the outline um, how you keep engaging people is um, like offering them like points or tickets to like a grand prize, what kind of things are you giving as a prize? So for you guys as new consultants, I would do the season's best cookbooks that you guys got with your kit. Okay. Because okay. you you know, you, I think they gave you what, five of them or four of them or something like that. Yeah, or we just ordered new ones. Okay. So I do a season's best cookbook. Um, okay. Other thing that you can do is you can add an item to their order. Okay. And again, it would be a season's best cookbook, a citrus peeler. I am cheap. Y'all should know that. Um, bamboo tongs, anything like two bucks and under. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Cheap girl. Cheap. Okay. Well, I was confused about that i was like oh my god what a like how no. much are we supposed to send for we that? want you to make money the point of this is to make money right we don't right. want anybody draining the bank um so the two options is if you have the season's best cookbooks that came you know with your kit 
whoever your winner is, you just mail the season's best cookbook to them since you already have them. What that lets you do, and the reason why I like to mail stuff to people is because, you know, Personal. you can pop a little flyer in there. You can put a little thank you note in there. You can, you know, put the thank you note in there with a, you know, make sure to join my group on Facebook. Um, you can, you know, my gosh, I used to utilize it in a, in a thousand different ways. When you get this, um, one of the things I used to love to do, um, so funny, I, I do these things and it works really good and then I stop doing it. Who's, who's, who'd have thunk it, right? Um, when they receive it, I put the little note in there that would say, um, so when you, when you receive, I wouldn't announce the winner, okay? I was like a mystery and I would post at the end of the party, I would say, um, you know, the party's over, but the fun's just beginning. Um, the, the person, uh, whoever our winner is, is going to receive happy mail from me with their free gift. Okay. okay. So then the note, the note would be for the person when they received it, um, make sure to go back to the group and announce yourself as the winner. Take a picture of yourself with your prize and post oh. tag me in it. Right. And if you do that, you know, then if you book a party, I will give you an extra, you know, $10 or $10, $10 and free or something like that. Cause then I'm getting a booking, you know, most of the time. And if they didn't want to book a show, they're still, you know, it's just fun. It was a fun way for them to like, you know, announce themselves as the winner. Um, so I did that for a while. That was fun. I don't know why I stopped, but anyway, now um, when you do $10 off, how do you do that? Okay. So again, we never pay $10. Okay. So it's going to, so since they're hosting the party, they'll be the host. Once their right. show's qualified, whatever I was going to, so let's say I gave them $10, okay, a free product to use, whatever $10 item it is that they want, I put that onto the host order. Okay. But then I'm not paying $10 for it. I'm actually paying eight bucks or seven bucks or whatever, because remember, they're going to have the discounts. Okay. okay, so even if they've exhausted their free product value, their half prices, the monthly special, they still have that 20 to 30% discount on anything else that they purchase on their order. And okay. so I would actually only pay like seven bucks for it. And then plus, I'm also making commission on that product. Right. Ah. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Tricky. Tricky. Um, now, the thing you do want to do, though, is payment wise, you want to make sure you click down there, you know, where the credit card, the cash, the check is. There's another little drop down that says um, other options, I think. Is that what it says, Tiffany? Other options? Or add payment? I think payment? it's additional payment, additional payment or additional something payment. like that. Yeah. Right. If you click that, there's a little, uh, it'll pull up consultant gift. Oh. When you flag consultant gift, it marks it for tax purposes. It oh. saves a record of it for you. So at tax time that you, you have a way to track that when you do that. Okay. okay. Now Tiffany's big on when she does a consultant gift in her planner, she marks on her, in her calendar too, so that she knows, you know, so if anything's missing in you know, in the document, when you print it out at the end of the year, you have a record of, of where you've spent money. So do you I recommend a, um, like a, pen and paper kind of planner or on your phone or both like what whatever what you're comfortable best with. for you guys I, whatever you're comfortable with some people are digital some people i girl <laughs> okay this is my bible this is the bible <laughs> bigger than my head uh, everything goes in there but i'm also a very digital person i normally have two <laughs> it's terrible I have a Google calendar I use and I use my, my uh, planner. Okay. So my planner is really to plan my business out. Um, and my Google calendar is more for like scheduling myself. Does that make sense? Uh huh. Yeah. Definitely. So that's kind of how I work mine. Um, okay. that I have it broken down in there. Um, I just started using the Google calendar, like, I don't know, two months ago, probably. Um, so I'm finding things that I really like about it. And then also there's things that I would never change because I'm so used to doing it in my planner that I, I right. you know, don't, don't, you know, fix what's not broke. So, right. <clears throat> yeah, that's a great question though. But yeah, so 
you can either, you know, do the do either of those options, either mail it, you know, but then you're paying a little bit of postage, but postage is also a tax write off. So you keep the receipts um, or you add it to their order. Um, and then the benefit of that is then you're not paying the postage, right? Right. Yeah. So if you're putting a $2 cookbook on someone's order, you know, they're the winner, the grand prize winner. Um, the other benefit is that it's $2 that you're paying out of, a, you know, through your, through your account. But then again, you're making the commission. So you're really, it, you're not spending $2. Well, you're paying $2 plus their tax. So it's about two twelve to $2, 20 yes. depending on where you're at. But then you're making your 20 to 30% commission on it. So, you know. Yep, yep. Good questions. What else? What else? What else? What other questions do you have? Uh. I can't wait to see Mike do a Facebook Live. <laughs> okay. Well, he does all, almost like I'll 90, put you in there. Like 95% of like the cooking. Right. So, Absolutely. you know, because I don't get home till 7, sometimes 7.30, 8 o'clock at night most most nights so right yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> so did you guys get calendar did, did you guys end up with shows on your calendar this month yes we're actually working on putting them on i forgot to actually put them on like actually book them through the was it consultants <laughs> corner like uh -huh. i have them on my calendar i gave a host back it out earlier this week and i was like oh there's a url huh well <laughs> need to get that on there huh <laughs> Two, two cooking and we have three. two cooking one this saturday or oh. this saturday the 15th and then the um the 22nd and mm. then we're gonna do the 21st we have two virtuals going off the 21st through the 28th awesome and i think i'm gonna throw in a virtual on him next week awesome. yeah because we we might want to just launch his and maybe see if we can get that uh cooker yeah <laughs> Huh? So, yeah. what do you mean? Join? Have let him join? No, 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 no. Like have him launch a party and. Oh, okay. I was like, because you know, you could sign him up <laughs> for twenty nine bucks this month. Twenty nine bucks, yeah. And then he could get that cooker for free when he does twelve fifty in his first thirty days. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> Well, it is a quick cooker. It's kind of like a pressure cooker. So oh, I'm just teasing y'all. No, but that, that it's definitely, it's going to be a tool that you're going to want. I'm telling you it's the first night I did a show with it. I booked five parties. The very first at, at Elisa's, at Elisa's party. I booked oh, five that? parties. Oh, sweet. Yeah. So I'm going to be in Littlestown a lot. Stop, nice. stop over. Oh yeah. Yeah. Seriously. Um, yeah, I think I'm out there. Yeah. I'm out there next weekend. So you have a party on next Saturday. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually in little sound next Saturday too. What time? Um, let her get her Bible. <laughs> at three. What time's your party? Five. At five. Ooh. Yep. Where's it at? Stop over. Right off of um, Colorado. I'm still working on getting that's where I'm going. I'm off of Colorado too. <laughs> which which Colorado? There's two. Um, over by Appler and okay, so that's near us. Yeah, that Colorado. Well, you know we're, gonna, we're gonna be on the other Colorado. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's like a quarter of a mile away. So. That's funny. That's so funny. Um. Yeah, I mean, I would come after if you guys wanted me to, but then it might actually make you a little bit more nervous if I came. Maybe just a smidgen. <laughs> yeah, it would be pretty much done at that point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys will have to let us know how it goes. I'm excited about that. Yes. Take it time to the dishes. Yeah. Right. Shut up, Tiffany. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you guys decide what you're making? Yes, we're going to do the... Was it grilled buffalo chicken wraps and the s'mores cake? Yum, yum. Yeah, right. and then I think I was going to do the citrus water or something just to have that out there. So good. Great so. recipe choices. 
Um, so what I, have you guys practiced it yet? Nope. Okay. So I would add that, to your, add that to your dinner list this week because those yeah. grocery store tax right off, right? When you write recipes so that you can kind of get a flow together timing wise. Well, that's what I told him. I said, we have to have that like Tuesday night or something yeah. that I can uh, figure out everything. I figure yeah, it'll, it'll work. The s'mores cake is really easy. It's, it's a really, really easy recipe. Um, what I would recommend is that, you know, when you get there to prep, ahead of time, go ahead and mix your cake batter because everybody knows how to mix a cake batter. The right. only difference is that you're using um, sour cream. So I kind of explain to people why you use sour cream in the cake batter. Um, but still, I normally mix it all together and then just tell them what's in it. You know, just little things like that, that people are like, I don't need to watch this girl mix a cake batter, you know, right. that you can do ahead of time that saves yourself okay. some time. Awesome. Any, any kind of prep work that you can do ahead of time will definitely, it makes things go smoother. And then like, I like to lay out my tools in order you know, as, right. as I'm progressing through the recipe. Um, so, you know, I used to do that, like, as I was a new consultant, I would lay everything out in order, um, just to kind of be able to kind of keep myself focused. Right. <clears throat> it makes it easier. So, awesome. So, Brooke, do you have any questions at all? I think that we pretty much covered all the ones that I had. Awesome. Well, I went through and I looked at Facebook because I never... I never created a group in Facebook before. So while you were talking about it, I went and I looked on how to do it. So I'm going. And to it's so it. easy, right? Yeah. It's so easy. Easy peasy. Miss Beth, do you have any questions at all? No, I don't have any questions right now. Okie dokie. Miss Tiffany, do you have questions? <laughs> okay, I guess not. <laughs> All right, I'm going to stop the recording.